this is my build video for the Versus Discus Launch Glider from Hobby King. This is what we get in the kit. My accessories pack was a bit odd because I ended up with extra finger peg and finger tab and an extra servo mount as well, which weren't needed. First step is to create the hard points for the wing bolts. So we need to gouge out some foam, 10 millimeters deep, 25 millimeters long, around each wing bolt and fill with thickened epoxy glue. Once it's cured, you need to sand it flat again so that the wings fit nicely together and reform the bolt holes uh, using a round file. Uh, here I'm just freeing up the ailerons, they're a bit stiff when they come. And fitting the pot on the boom, that's a really tight fit to start off with, so you do need to sand that a fair bit to uh, make the fit work. Took me about 15 minutes this step. Now, cutting the holes for the aileron servos in the wing, they go on the under surface, and it's probably a good idea to move the servo forward about five millimeters away from the carbon fiber spar. Peeling off the fiberglass cover, and then mill out the foam with a Dremel or a pick or something like that. And here I'm forming the hole for the servo leads. Now to glue the wings together, just mask along the under edge, turn it over uh, and use epoxy glue to glue them together. This joint will be later reinforced with carbon fibre cloth so it doesn't need a lot of glue. So weight one end of the wing down and lift the other end up 162 millimetres to get the correct dihedral. Once it's cured, sand the area to a width of 25 millimetres, mask it off, paint on some epoxy finishing resin and lay down a piece of cloth about 25 millimetres wide and 185 millimetres long and paint some more finishing resin into it. Use as little as possible for this step, uh, just enough to wet it out and then blot up the excess with some paper towel. You can lay some plastic over the top uh, so that it cures with a nice shiny surface. You need to use really light plastic. And then when it's cured, reform the holes with a drill. And do the same for the under surface as well. Reform the holes again once that's cured. Now I'm threading through the servo leads after cutting off one of the ends. And I'll solder that onto the, uh, the servo, the actual servo lead. The kit comes with a four pin plug, but I didn't want to have to deal with that, so I just extended each servo lead. Now, marking the uh, point where the control horn glues in, um, cutting a little slot. gluing it into position and I'm just drilling out that hole to the right size using a piece of the push rod wire that was supplied. Now for the aileron push rods, bending up some little Z bends using the supplied wire and then gluing that onto the end of uh, the carbon fibre rod. Use a little bit of heat shrink to hold it in position. 
now centering up the servos to work out the correct length for the aileron push rods. Just making sure the cleavers fits on the end. Drilling out the servo arm so that the cleavers fits. Now carefully cutting the carbon fibre rod to the right length. Fitting it all together, and making sure it works okay. And then once I've got the right length by sliding that cleavers backwards and forwards, I can put some CA, CA glue on there. Now I'm cutting the slot to glue in the finger tab. It's about 15 millimetres in from the end and slightly overlapped with the carbon fibre spar. And masked off the area, sanded it up and uh, put some more carbon fibre cloth reinforcing here. I only had little bits left over unfortunately. I should have used just a single piece of carbon fibre. Would have saved a bit of sanding back later on. So reform that slot and glue the finger tab in. Make sure it's vertical and lined up with the centre line of the plane. Now I'm freeing up the elevator hinge. And gluing in the control horn. Now I'm mounting the uh, servos into the servo mounting tray. Now this Hobby King receiver is too big to fit into the pod, so I removed the cover and um, replaced it with some heat shrink. Now I'm gluing in some supports for the servo tray and making sure everything fits in. You need quite a small battery to fit in the nose there but uh, that's all going to fit. Now the boom supplied is 700 mil long which is too long. You definitely need to cut off at least five, uh, 50 millimeters of the boom from the tail end. Otherwise, your, your plane will end up too heavy. Now, cutting the slots for the vertical stabiliser to fit in. Just going one outside then. Sand the boom and the vertical stabiliser before gluing them on. These will be fiberglass on later on, so you don't need to use too much glue. Now, making the support for the horizontal stabiliser from two blocks of 5mm uh, balsa. Um, and you can shape that into a nice aerofoil shape to reduce drag, and this is forming the concave bottom surface so that it glues onto the boom nicely. Marking the centre line of the horizontal stabiliser and gluing that balsa support on. Now you'll see I've taped it down onto a cutting mat so I can use the um, horizontal and vertical lines to line everything up. Now this step is quite crucial, gluing the boom on. So the vertical stabiliser needs to be 90 degrees to the horizontal stabiliser and the boom needs to be 90 degrees to the horizontal stabiliser and the height of the boom needs to be lifted up at the front to make it level all the way along. 
measured from the centre of the boom. Okay, if that all went well, it should look something like this. Now to reinforce those joints, uh, you cut some fiberglass cloth, use more of the finishing resin uh, sparingly on the tail. You, you want to minimise the weight down the tail end at all costs. So we have one piece that wraps around the boom for the horizontal stabiliser and one piece on either side for the vertical stabiliser. Now I'm drilling holes for the uh, spring pull linkage system to exit from the boom. I'm gluing a little bit of plastic tubing for the line to exit the boom, taping that down down into position. And this is the spring uh, bended up from some of the supplied uh, stainless steel wire. 25 millimeter legs and 50 millimeter long centre section. And they get inserted into the body of the uh, the rudder and the elevator. This is quite a tricky, tricky part of the process. Uh, trying not to drill out through the edges. Uh, and I inserted some of the Teflon tubing so that the legs could be inserted into that. Uh, and then just reinforcing around those holes with a bit of CA glue. Now I'm threading the Kevlar line down through the boom linking it, that up to the control horn and uh, this is how it all works now I'm gluing down the servo tray in the pod Uh, after wrapping the wing servos with masking tape and gluing them into the wing, uh, I can remove them later on by slitting the masking tape if I have to. And now gluing the boom onto the pod, making sure the wings and the horizontal stabiliser are perfectly parallel, connecting everything up again to make sure it works. This is another fiddly bit too, getting the right length for these lines to um, have the control surfaces neutral. Attaching the wings, plugging everything in. We're almost ready to fly. Just need to check the centre of gravity now. It needs to be between 70 and 80 millimetres back from the leading edge. Mine needed about 15 extra grams in the nose to achieve that. Now it's time to go flying. <laughs>